What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp quick tutorial for you. So in this video we're going to talk about how to use the SketchUp Styles toolbar to quickly change the way that your model looks in SketchUp. And before I get started, today's video is brought to you by the SketchUp Essentials course. The SketchUp Essentials course is a course I put together that's basically the equivalent of a two-day in-person training for SketchUp. So we cover everything from an introduction to the basic tools in SketchUp through more advanced concepts like modeling with extensions, modeling for interior design and layout, and photorealistic rendering. So if that's something you're interested in, you want to take your SketchUp training to the next level, make sure you check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash course. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about the styles toolbar within SketchUp. So the styles toolbar is a toolbar that comes built in um, with your um, SketchUp installation and basically it's a toolbar that allows you to adjust the way that your model looks and it's a toolbar that doesn't get talked about very much and it actually creates a fair amount of trouble for new users so before I get started um, model credit for this model from the 3d warehouse is apartment building by Paul wall so you can search for that and uh, download that from the 3d warehouse but what I wanted to talk about is I wanted to talk about the different things that you can do with the styles toolbar. And so there's two different sections in the styles toolbar. Um, the first is basically your edges section. So this is a section that basically affects what edges you can see, specifically having to do with edges that are blocked with faces. So um, like for example, the x-ray mode lets you see through faces and you can see your different edges and that sort of thing. Um, while the second section of this toolbar more adjusts the way that your different faces look. So we'll get into that in a second. Let's start off by looking at these first two options within your model. So you can see how right now this model um, it's got all the textures loaded everything like that and uh, you can't really see through any of the faces well if you were to come in here and you were to click on this first option what that's going to do is that's going to turn on x-ray mode and basically what x-ray mode does is it makes it so you can actually see through all the different faces in your model so like for example you can see how you can see through the exterior of this building and you can see the stairs and then you can also see into this kind of penthouse apartment that's been modeled on the top level so you can actually see through those faces now and you can actually kind of inference from those so you can see how i can kind of move move my mouse over different points and this will kind of inference to those um, and uh, you know that's something that can be moderately useful it can be a little bit difficult to actually use that inferencing but you can definitely use that so you can use this to see through the different faces in your model and so one thing to note about these first two options is you can turn them on and off just by clicking on them so you can see I can click on this option and I can turn this on and off you're not gonna be able to do that with this second set of options one of them always has to be on but what happens with a lot of newer users is at some point they'll be clicking around and they'll click on this this option and they don't know what they clicked on and then their models just kind of stuck here where they're kind of seeing through everything and they don't know how to turn this off so to turn this off just click on this button again in order to turn that off and same thing with the show back edges which we'll talk about in a minute and so one thing to note about the x-ray mode is first of all it's a little bit more computer and processor intensive so I'm not seeing a huge drop in performance right now um, but you can see how because it has to show all this extra geometry if you have a super heavyweight model and it's trying to show all of this as well um, that may slow your model down but the other thing I want to note is you can actually adjust the way that this style looks and the transparency quality by going into your styles section of your tray and so that's for PC users um, I think the styles section will pop up as a window for Mac users but for PC users you go to window default tray and make sure that the option for show tray has been clicked and make sure the styles checkbox has also been clicked and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna go into this section for edit and you're gonna to wanna to click on your face setting. So that's gonna adjust the way that your faces look within SketchUp. And um, I'll link to a video about creating custom styles in here. We're not gonna talk about that in this video. But one thing I wanna note is there's a slider down here for X-ray opacity. And so you can see how right now I can't click on that slider because um, that's kind of preset unless you click this drop down and you go to nicer instead of faster. And so if you go to nicer instead of faster, what you can do is you can actually drag this slider 
to adjust how opaque your faces are. So if I drag this all the way back here, you can see how you can see through a little bit better, but your faces aren't really showing through as well. So, and if I kind of drag that over into the middle here, then this looks different. So you can adjust the way that your transparency looks within X-ray mode by doing that. And so that's how X-ray mode works. I wanna talk now about the show back edges option. And uh, we're just gonna go to a simpler model for this one. So this is basically just a very simple model that I've created um, that basically is just a pair of boxes kind of running into each other. Um, so in X-ray mode, what this is gonna do is this is gonna turn these faces transparent. So we talked about that. Well, this other option, instead of turning your faces transparent, what's it, what it's gonna do is it's gonna show your back edges. And so basically what that means is it's gonna add a dotted line in here um, that's just a temporary dotted line. It's not changing anything permanent, but it's basically gonna add a dotted line in here that's kind of overlaid on these faces. So you can see how these faces are not transparent when you select this. Instead, it's just giving you kind of an indicator line where there's lines behind whatever your current face is. And one of the cool things about this is you can actually, if I kind of look through this top part here, you can actually see through your edges and you can actually inference lines off of that. Um, so like for example, you can see how I was able to draw a line on the bottom of this box even though I was looking through the top. So you can use inferencing in order to do this. And you can't really do like push pull and that kind of thing through the box, but you can draw lines in here. So you can see how using the inferencing in here could be really useful. And so once again, just to turn that off, you can just click on this button right here. And the nice thing about that mode is you're not actually showing through your faces, so the processing power is a lot less intensive on that option. And so, like I said, with either one of these, just click the icon again in order to turn them off. And so now I'm gonna go back to my apartment model example, and what I wanna do is I wanna talk about this next set of options. So these are your options for changing the way your faces look. And so in this case, we're just gonna run through them one by one. So um, we're gonna start off, the first one is wireframe. What wireframe does is it basically hides all of the faces in your model. So when wireframe is selected, there's no faces in here for you to click on. This is literally just showing the lines that are in your model. So you can use this for a few different things. You can create kind of wireframe cut throughs. I mean, generally speaking, you're gonna kind of have to adjust this in order to get what you want, especially on more complex models. But if you don't wanna show those faces, you can just click that option. So the second option is hidden line mode. Basically what hidden line mode is gonna do is that's gonna show all of your lines and it's gonna show all of your faces but they're not gonna be shaded. So you can see how there's no texture shading in here right now in hidden line mode. And so this is great for like previewing shadows. So you can see how your shadows are in here and if you adjust them, you can really see strongly where those are gonna go in your model. So this is good for that. You could probably export some stuff to layout with this uh, mode as well. So the third option is shaded mode. And so what shaded mode is gonna do is it's gonna show basically the colors of your textures without loading the actual texture images. So you can see how, if I was to go back to the full on texture here, you can see this is a brick image that's basically tiling an image over and over again. Well, if you click on the shaded mode, this is just gonna shade this the color of your image, but it's not actually gonna load the image file. So this is a great option for, if you have a big model with a lot of really heavy duty textures, you can switch over to shaded mode in order to be able to see what your colors are gonna be without having to wait for SketchUp to load all of those different texture images. So this can be a much faster way to preview things within your model. So the fourth option is just full on, textures loaded, complete full um, face experience. So basically these are just loading every piece of data that they have in there. They're loading all of the textures, all the colors, basically anything that's in your model. And then the last option is an interesting one. The last one is a monochrome option. Basically what the monochrome option does is it shows your faces by either the front color or the back color. And so I'm gonna link to a video down below where I talked about the front and back sides of faces in SketchUp, but basically every single face has a front side 
and it has a backside. And so those can have different results in like rendering programs and stuff like that. And so sometimes what you wanna do is you wanna go into monochrome mode and check which faces are facing outward. So in this case, you can see how some of these faces are a darker gray than some of the others. The reason for that is because these are basically loading your front and back colors within SketchUp. And so if you go into your style section of your tray, you go to edit, and you go into your face settings under the monochrome option, or this says display shaded using all same, you can see how this allows you to set your front and back colors within your model. So this is a really good way, like if you were to change this to a red or something like that, now all of your faces that have the back color facing out show up as red, so you can go in there and start changing those. So this is a real good way to go in here and check for different like face errors and uh, making sure all the proper front faces are facing your camera within your model. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Did you know about this toolbar and some of the stuff that it did? Um, have you ever gotten stuck with x-ray mode on? I just love having that SketchUp conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing in this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. So make sure you check out that link in the notes down below. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.